everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Victoria Montefusco and I'm a lover of all things when it comes to makeup, beauty, and fragrance. And today I'm going to be showing you all a first impressions of a palette that I just got in the mail a couple of days ago and I'm super excited to try it out. So this palette is the Blend Bunny Cosmetics, the Dollhouse palette. I currently own the Surge palette from Blend Bunny Cosmetics and I absolutely adore it. So I'm of course expecting wonderful things from their neutral palette, but that is what today is for. We're gonna put this to the test. You're gonna see my unfiltered thoughts in real time and hopefully I do enjoy this palette and I'll have more opportunities throughout the month to play with it. So if you are interested in hearing my thoughts about this palette, as well as some swatches, all of that fun stuff, then please keep on watching. All right, so in case you haven't noticed, all of my face is done except for my eyes and my lips. So we're gonna start with the eyes because that's what we're here for. And I am first going to go into my eye primer. That is the Milani eyeshadow primer. I'm gonna do that real quick. And then we'll start going into some of these beautiful mattes. All right, so eye primer is on and I want to show you the color story of this palette before I get started with the look. So in case you haven't seen it, this is what the palette looks like. Similar to other Blend Bunny palettes that they've released in the past, each column is a color story. So in here, I can see some cooler tone neutrals, some warmer tone neutrals, pinky tone neutrals, greeny tone neutrals. Um, there are definitely a lot of different types of neutral leaning looks that you can make with this. And I really like how their palettes are set up because you can go down a column, just have a very monochromatic, easy look, or you can mix and match um, and create a look that's a little bit more interesting. So I like how there's three different mattes in here um, going from lightest to darkest. So you can have one in the crease um, in your the main part of your crease, one to blend out your crease, and then one in your outer corner. It just makes things really easy. Um, and I feel like it's a very user-friendly palette and I think all of their palettes are user-friendly because they're set up in this way. But anyways, let's get into the fun part which is actually like applying the eyeshadows and stuff. So I'm first going to go into the shade called Figure, which is this like greeny, grungy kind of neutrally shade. And I'm going to apply that into my crease. And I think for that shade, I'm going to go into my Nabla N205 brush. This is a very, very small crease brush. I want to be pretty detailed with where I place this into my crease. So I'm just gonna go in, apply this into the crease, what I really want to do today is more of a grungy toned, like neutral look because I am wearing like a neutral colored plaid shirt. I wore that on purpose so I could really play with color if I wanted to, or I could do something a bit more grungy and warm tone toned if I wanted to. And I'm wanting to go for the grungy warm tone kind of look today. So that's what I'm going to do. So these shades have, are a little bit powdery. I noticed that in Blend Bunny's other palette. So what you have to do is like when you tap in with your brush, don't tap in too much and always tap off the excess with these. Because if you don't, you might get colored powder all over your face. And that's not the vibe. Less concerning with like neutral shades, of course, than like if you were using bright blue or bright purple but you still don't want fallout all over your face. All right, so that's the first shade. Next, I wanna go into the shade Plastic, which is this like orangey neutral shade. That's a matte. I'm gonna go in with this Beauty Bakery brush. It's one of from one of their brush kits, but it doesn't have a name. It has like a little spatula on that. I think it's really cute. And I'm gonna go into this, tap off the excess, and I'm going to blend from where I put that grungy green a little bit upwards. Now, this is definitely a very warmed tone, warm toned, like orangey kind of shade. That's what I like about this palette. I feel like it's very much neutrals with a twist. And I think that makes it fun to work with. All right, I'm gonna go back into that green shade that I used called Figure with that same brush just to define it, define my very inner crease a little more. And then I'm gonna go into the shade Undress, which is above that orangey shade that I used before. I'm gonna take that same Beauty Bakery brush and I'm gonna blend out the 
like edges of where I put that orangey shade. I love the difference that using those lighter shades make because it just makes it so easy to get a blended out crease. It's, it's so easy to work with. I absolutely love, love these palettes. All right, so that is it for the crease. Just a very easy way to use two of these color stories, the grungy green one and the orangey one to create something pretty interesting. So next I'm going to go into the shade Madame, which is that bottom matte row. They all kind of look like blacks if you're like really far away from them. When you look up close, you can see the undertones to them. And this one is like a cool toned, like dark green kind of shade. So I'm gonna take a shader brush and we're gonna put this on my outer corner. So I'm gonna take this Nabla N103 and we're gonna apply this on my outer corner. Make sure to tap off the excess and then we'll blend it out. This is very, very pigmented. So you don't need a ton of shadow to get the depth that you want. So I would recommend, especially if you're not familiar with an eyeshadow formula, start out light and build it up if you want to. Because if you go in with a lot of pigment off the bat, it's gonna be harder to blend, especially if the formula itself doesn't blend well or if it's a difficult to blend color, like a purple, a blue, that kind of thing. So I just like to go in with layers to build up the depth that I'm looking for. All right, now I'm gonna take my Nabla N305 to blend out my outer corner. into that shade that I was using in my outer corner. And we're just gonna darken the very outer part just to add some more depth back in. And we'll blend it out a little bit more. Beautiful. And I'm still gonna go back into that figure shade again, which was that green. And I'm just gonna pop that back into the inner crease a little bit, just to make sure that does pop. We don't want that to disappear. All right, so there are all of the mattes for the upper lid. I am now going to apply some glitter glue very quickly, and then we'll go into the metallics, which of course I'm super excited about. I love metallics. Um, and then we'll go from there. All right, now that we have glitter glue on, I'm gonna go into some metallics. So I'm first gonna go into the Sage Chantilly, which is on the bottom, then gonna go into Pin Curls, which is on the top of that column. And so I'm gonna apply Chantilly to the middle of my eye. Oh, wow. That is a very nice metallic. Wow, that is so pigmented and metallic. Oh my gosh, that is beautiful. And let's go into it pin curls in the inner part. Ooh, yeah, that's really pretty. I really like that. All right, so that is it for the metallics on the top of my lid. So now I'm gonna do my lower lash line as well as my inner corner and my brow bone. So I think for my lower lash line, I'm going to go into my N304 brush and I want to go into the shade Fasten, which is this dark brown in that same column as that orange that we use in my crease. So I'm gonna gently tap into that and swipe onto the lower lash line just to provide a little bit of definition. Not too much though. And for my inner corner and brow bone, I'm gonna go into the shade Lace, which is in that top row, it's the lightest shade. It looks a little bit maybe iridescent. And we're just gonna pop that in and see how it looks. 
So I am back. My dog was barking and during that time I decided to apply my eyeliner, mascara, and also lip gloss. So this is the completed look with the palette. Overall, I think that the shades that I use blended out very nicely. The mattes, um, they were, the mattes were also plenty pigmented. They were just a pleasure to work with. And the metallics that I used are just overall really, really stunning. Um, I also own, like I mentioned, the Surge palette from Blend Bunny, and I feel like I like the metallic formula on this palette more than I like the metallic formula on the Surge palette. I feel like these metallics are, uh, at least the ones that I use, are a little bit more creamy to the touch and a little bit more like sparkly, shiny, um, and that's the kind of metallic formula I really do enjoy. So overall, the shades that I use, I think are really pleasant to work with. This is the same Blend Bunny formula that I seem to enjoy in the Surge palette for the most part. Um, and yeah, I think this eye look is absolutely stunning. And I think it's a really fun twist on a neutral palette. So those are my thoughts. Um, but now I want to do some swatches. I do not have any lotion, primer, glitter glue. Nothing is on my hands. These are dry swatches, plain swatches. So I'm going to go column by column, so color story by color story, and we're going to swatch this palette. So first I'm going to start with the shade Mannequin, which is like a, I would say, uh, like a coppery pinky kind of metallic, then Undress, which is that light shade that I use to blend out my crease, and then Plastic, which is that orange shade. So those are going to be the first three shades. So there are the first three shades of the palette. They swatch very nicely. Right. And then last for that color store, we have Fasten, which is that dark brown that I used in my lower lash line, and Marionette, which is a dark brown metallic. So there is that first color story. So the next color story, these are like bluish, purpley, mauve-y kind of shades. So we're first going to go into Glass Eyes, which is a blue metallic. Hold Me, which is like a dusty purple, and then No Strings, which is like a darker dusty purple matte. So there's the first three shades of that column. And then to round out that color story, we have Cinched, which is a very dark purple matte, really pretty, and Imaginary, which is a purple metallic. And here are what those shades look like. Moving on now to the very cool tone neutrals. We have Lace, which is that inner corner shade that I used, really beautiful. Display, which is a very light cool toned brown. Attic, which is a medium cool toned brown. Those are the first three shades of that color story. And then to round out that color story, we have Stitched, which is a black, and Harlequin, which is a black metallic. I don't really ever use black metallic, so we'll see if I ever use that one, but I'm not sure. So there are those last two shades swatched, and that is half of the palette, the first half of the palette on my left hand. So next we're going to go into more like warm toned browns. So first we have Pretend, which is like an iridescent -y, kind of like pink shade. We have Pose, which is a very light, warmer toned brown. And we have Vintage, which is a medium, warmer toned brown. So there are the first three shades swatched. Really pretty. And then to round out that color story, we have Silhouette, dark, very, very, very dark brown. And we have Dress Up, which is a dark brown metallic. And those are what those shades look like. Next, we have the pink column. So we first have the shade Tool, which is like more of a goldy champagne-y pink. We have Baby Doll, which is a very light pink matte. And we have Rouge, which is that medium pink matte. There are the first three shades swatched. And then to round out that color story, we have Plume, which is a dark, 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 like pinky purpley shade, and Little Sister, which is like a really pretty, like medium pink metallic. There we go. All right, we're on the last column. So pin curls, this is what I used in my inner part of my upper lid. We have porcelain, which is just like a nudie kind of matte shade. Figure, which is that grungy green that I used today. There are those three shades swatched. 
And then to round out that color story and the palette, we have Madame, which is that very, very, very dark green, and Chantilly, which is that green metallic, which is absolutely beautiful. So that is the second half of the palette. So this is the full palette swashed out, these two hands of mine. So overall, all of these shades swashed really well. Um, I think there are a few standouts, especially with the metallics. Like some of these metallics are definitely my speed, especially like those light medium kind of ones, but like the dark brown, the black, um, those kinds of metallics are not really my vibe. But I'm really looking forward to playing with this palette more, diving more into these color stories, because today I really played with those oranges and those grungy greens, but I would love to play with the purples, the pinks, and the browns a lot more. And of course, um, I will give you all my fully fledged thoughts on this palette, review all of that um, during my monthly review roundup, as I always do. So this is just a first impressions video, but based on my prior experience with Blend Bunny, based on how today went, and based on these swatches, I have a feeling I'm really going to enjoy this palette, and this is going to be a neutral palette staple in my collection. So with that, that wraps up today's video. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you like this video, please like this video. It helps out with the YouTube algorithm and it also helps me know what kinds of content you like to see on my channel. If you like me, please subscribe. I'd love to have you all here. I post two to three times per week. And if you have anything to comment down below, any questions about this palette, any questions about the Surge palette that I have from Blend Bunny, or just any comments about this palette, maybe you bought it yourself and maybe you have some thoughts that you'd like to share with me, I'd love to hear those, so please comment down below. And thank you all for spending a little part of your day with me, and I will see you all next time. Bye!